Guys, three practical things before we start. Um, the first is, in the course of my talk, I'm going to mention a number of resources that you may want to take a note of. So get your phones out and snap photos of the slides so you have them to refer to. Secondly, um, I'm going to be citing a number of people, and I'm going to be showing you their Twitter handles on the slides. You know what you have to do if you've heard me before? Tweet the fucking shit out of everybody you want to celebrate, so please do that. And, and the third thing to say is just what I always say, which is that everything I say today about gender diversity also applies to diversity of race, ethnicity, sexuality, disability, and age. Gender cuts across all of those, but this keynote is entirely applicable to every single one of those areas of diversity. Um, those of you who've been at previous 3% conferences um, may or may not know that um, I've keynoted at every single one, and my keynotes have deliberately followed a narrative um, along, along the, the way through the years. Um, at the very first 3% conference five years ago, um, I did the opening keynote and I talked about the issue, about the appalling lack of women in creative leadership and in leadership in our industry. Um, the second year, I talked about the micro-actions that every one of us can take to change that. The third year, change wasn't happening fast enough, and I was pretty frustrated. And so my talk that year was about accelerants. I gave you three things that you could do to make change happen a whole lot faster. Last year, change still wasn't happening. And I was even more frustrated. And so I spoke about the things that need to happen, the barriers that need to be broken down to see tangible, real results in our industry. This year, still, Nothing's changed. As several high profile episodes and the elephant on Madison Avenue study have demonstrated. And so now I'm really frustrated. And so I'm going to pick up at the start of this keynote exactly where I left off at last year's keynote. The last thing I said to you last year was everybody in this audience, everyone watching this talk, if you are working somewhere that does not welcome what you uniquely bring to the table, somewhere that does not value and reward everything that you do, that does not celebrate you, that does not allow you to innovate, disrupt, and create in the way that you want to, GTFO, get the fuck out. <laughs> and so, I'm gonna pick up from that, and what I want you to do this year is I want you to be the future of advertising, and I want you to start your own agency. And this talk is the 10-point plan that you need to enable every single one of you to walk out of here tonight and start your own agency. Now, um, the word agency there is in inverted commas deliberately, because what I mean when I say start your own agency is not start an agency like all of them in the industry today. I want you to start what you think should be the future advertising. I want you to start your own business, whatever that is. But the key thing is that you should start something that gives you agency. That you start a business that allows you to decide what you do, what you create, and where you take it. So, um, let's cut straight to, to the heart of the matter. Point number one, you don't need money to start the agency of the future. The great thing about working in a service industry is that all you need is your brain. You don't need an office. You can work remotely from home, you can go to your client's own offices, you can meet in Starbucks, in hotel lobbies, so you don't need to spend money on an office. And you don't need to spend money on people, because today in the gig economy, all the resources you need are within your own network. So know that you can walk out of here and start your own agency because you don't need money to do it. What you do need to do is to identify your minimum viable cost of living. So this is your weekend exercise. Go home this weekend, 
sit down, make a list of all of your monthly outgoings and costs, and this will vary, by the way, depending on you know, how old you are, what stage you're at in your career, whether you have children, but take a long, hard look at those costs and see where you can reduce them. And quite often you can, because our industry is very good at persuading us we have to live at a certain level, in the same way we're very good at persuading other people that they should be buying things to enable them to live at that level. Trust me, speaking as someone who used to be a high-flying, highly paid ad exec and is now a bootstrapping entrepreneur, you can totally halve your cost of living if you have to. So that's point number one. Point number two is know that you're extremely good at things you don't know you're extremely good at. People lose sight of the fact that the reason I do everything I do to champion diversity is because I bloody love advertising and I bloody love our industry. And I want to see it be different for its own good. So I regularly champion us for the outside world because the outside world doesn't give us enough credit for the fact that to be good at what we do, you have to be extraordinarily good at a whole range of skills, many of which you guys often don't even realize you have. I spoke about this in the Man Ambassadors um, track yesterday when I called out Senator Slingerland of Mesa and Priscilla Natkins of the Ad Council as two prime examples of women who are brilliant at doing all sorts of things that are destined at the top of an agency. But um, even I, when I left BBH 11 years ago, discovered that I was really good at things I didn't realize, like you know, understanding a business situation really quickly, analyzing it, identifying a strategy to change it, a creative vision for improving it, and then how you execute on that. That's what we're all good at. And so no, you can start your own agency because you are extremely good at things you don't currently know you're good at. So, what should that agency be? So, it's blue sky it. Ask yourself, what do I really want to do? Look around you. Take a long, hard look at our industry. What is missing that should be there? What would you love to have, but nobody's doing it? What could you uniquely create that nobody else is? Because I guarantee you, with the extraordinary amount of expertise, talent, creativity, and vision in this room alone, let alone the rest of our industry, when you identify that, thousands of other people, if not millions, are going to want it. So, what have you always wanted to do? Now you can do it. And when you do it, the great thing is, you can then design that business to be the way that you want to work. I regularly talk to people who come to me because they're having a midlife crisis, a career crisis, a feeling they've lost their way, and I always ask them to do the same two things, which interestingly, by the way, are the same two things you should do if you're a business that's lost your way as much as a person. Number one is, identify what it is that you absolutely love doing, that you're passionate about. You know, if you're doing a job currently, take everything you do in that job, be ruthless, strike from the record everything you hate doing, and focus in only on what you love. And interestingly, when you conduct this exercise, Quite often, the things you really love doing in your job are not necessarily numbers one, two, and three on your job spec. So, identify what it is you really love doing, and then identify the conditions under which you most love doing it. So you might go, I really love doing this. I particularly love it when I only do it between these hours. I really love it when I do it only working with these kinds of people, with these sorts of clients. Maybe you really love it when you only do it from this one location or these two locations. And then design an opportunity, a job, a venture around those two things because then it never feels like work. Because you're doing what you most love doing in the circumstances in which you most love doing it. And the great thing is that there are women absolutely redesigning the way our industry does business as we speak. I've been campaigning for years for more female founded agencies. There have been relatively few because when you work in an industry that flattens women, that makes them believe they don't have what it takes, that they're not good enough, 
that they're not welcome, they're not celebrated, they're not valued. You don't get female-founded startups. And the really good news about the last years is that that is changing. So here are some examples of women in our industry who start their own businesses, who are working the way that they want to work. Joan Creative. Um, and by the way, um, all of these businesses are doing wonderful things, but I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to pull out a few points. So Lisa Clooney and Jamie Robinson founded Joan Creative. This is Lisa talking to Ad Age when they launched about the fact they found it around a co-development process. One of the things that breaks my heart is when a client says to me, I'm not a creative, but I, I have this idea. They apologize before they say anything. And a lot of the time, they're frigging awesome ideas. No one is holding the creative cult. We all get to be creative. So that's how Joe Creative is redesigning the way that they do business. Heidi Hackamer and Wolf and Willoughby. Heidi, are you here? You were here yesterday. Yes, no? Possibly not. Um, so um, Heidi set out to design her strategic planning agency from the beginning as a diverse company and as a company that actually would be able to welcome diversity because of the way it operated. This is from an interview with Heidi. This is how Wolf and Wilhelmine operates. Her employees are not allowed to send emails after 7 p.m. or on Saturdays. They'll be disciplined for sending emails or being connected to the office while on vacation. Employees who do not take their vacation time are ineligible for bonuses. Each week, the agency conducts a meeting where everyone estimates their workload for the week. If anyone is in danger, of exceeding 40 hours that week, work is shifted around or freelancers are brought in to help. All of this is disclosed to clients up front before they begin working together. And then, and then Barbara Suolero over in Sao Paulo, Brazil, founded Mesa e Cadeira. We are Mesa. Mesa is all about doing. They make stuff. They work with brands to solve business problems, and they do that through an intensive six-day process called a mesa, which is Portuguese for table, where they bring together hybrid talent around that table, and where that table's brief is, whatever the client's business challenge is, make products that solve it. Create prototypes. I was lucky enough to see this in action because Mesa invited me to Brazil earlier this year to do a Mesa for Make Love Not Porn, and their process is phenomenal. These are all women who are redesigning the way our industry does business. You can design your business to work any way you want it to. And when you do that, you can also redesign your business model. Too many people either think, oh, this is our industry business model, this is the only way we've ever made money. This is the only way we can ever make money. Or they think there's a set number of business models out there, and I have to use one of those. Neither of those things is true. Your business model can be anything you want it to be. And a really good starting point is to ask yourself this question. How would I like to make money? Because I can guarantee you that you do not want to make money the way our industry currently makes money. Or rather, the way our industry currently does not make money. Because you don't want to operate on the, on the premise of timesheets. The value we deliver to our clients is not about the amount of time spent. You don't want to make money through a system that allows clients to announce they won't be paying you for 90 days. That's not the way to make money. So, Ask yourself, how would I like to make money? And then design your business and your business model around that. Very important. Design your business from day one to one day ultimately make a lot of money. I want every single one of you, when you leave here tonight and start starting your own agency, to absolutely set out from day one to make an absolute goddamn fucking shit ton of money. The reason you need to do that is, first of all, sad fact of life, we do not get taken seriously as women unless we get taken seriously financially. And by the way, again, that is true for every other diversity group in our industry. The moment you prove 
you can start making money. You get taken seriously. And by the way, one of the things I find astonishing is how much our industry does not realize that diversity drives the creativity that makes a huge amount of money. When you have a, at the top of an industry a closed loop of white guys talking to white guys about other white guys, what you get out the other end is Batman versus Superman. <laughs> when, you, when you welcome the talent and creativity and skills of women and people of color into the room where it happens, what you get is Hamilton. Yeah. And, not only, and not only is Hamilton proving how creativity can disrupt every single convention of the Broadway musical, Hamilton is making billions of dollars. That's the money that we can all make. So I wanted to set out to make that money, but also I wanted to make that money because then you can reinvest that money in the rest of us. Women, every diverse group, make a huge amount of money with your own agency and then invest that money in the agencies and the businesses that the rest of us are starting. So think from day one about your exit strategy. Think about how you're going to build the value of your agency to one day sell it to somebody else for that absolute goddamn fucking shit ton of money. This is Rob Dixon and Donna Toronto of R&D Venture Partners talking to the drum last month. No matter the circumstances, every good agency can sell itself. So you absolutely can realize that value because you're going to do what the men in our industry do and you're going to bullshit the hell out of your agency in a way that gets you an enormous valuation. We're in advertising, remember? We talk a great game. You can do it for your business to make a huge amount of money. The good news also is that um, you can start the agency of the future alongside your current job. Now, let me explain what I mean by that, because before employers in the audience start freaking out, I'm talking about doing this completely legally. What I mean by this is, um, and, and actually what I mean is something that every employer should welcome, because it enhances the value of your employees and your agency. What I mean by this is, when, as I said to you earlier, you have blue skied it, you have started thinking about what you would do if you were to start your own business that is the future of advertising, you want to start putting what you want to do out there. And I mean that in the form of, you know, your creative philosophy for your agency, your premise for your agency, what you believe the future of advertising is. Start writing blog posts. Start tweeting about it. Share your thoughts on social media. Start building a community of like-minded people around your idea for your agency. Because that's how you test it in the marketplace. That's how you begin getting early proof of concept. That's how you find out whether what you want to do has legs and whether people ultimately will pay money for it. Jenna Niven is an associate credit director at RGA. She's also one of my personal coaching clients. She is enormously interested in artificial intelligence. And so she has started, alongside her job at RGA, um, her own company. I mean, it's not a company in the formal sense because it's not a business per se. It is her attempt to do exactly what I've talked about, which is explore what she believes in, which is the power of AI-driven design and thinking and creativity. Take a look at goodbehavior.nyc because what she's doing is enormously interesting, and she's out there proof testing it. She's doing pro bono projects in her spare time to see whether this is welcomed and where she can take it. Point number eight. Good news, plenty of people want to fund your business. When you start your agency, when you've decided you know, what your big idea is, there are people out there absolutely gagging to fund it. We are the reason, our industry is the reason, there are those ridiculous unicorn valuations in Silicon Valley. Facebook's valuation, Snapchat's valuation, they're all predicated on advertising. They're predicated on the assumption that those tech platforms will be able to pull in lots of money from brands and lots of money from what we do. So, it's not surprising that
that there are a lot of people out there who really, really want to fund the future of advertising. David Jones wants to fund you. David Jones is building You and Mr. Jones, which is a holding company for businesses that are building brands through technology, brand tech. This is an email to me from Annette Stover of You and Mr. Jones um, last month. We want to invest in female founders in the brand tech space. Our investments are typically early stage, seed A and B round. Guys, they want to hear from you. Start that brand tech company and they will give you the seed funding that you need. Brava Investments is a new company started by Natalie Molina Nino. Um, it's backed by a number of people, including Warren Buffett. And this is what Brava Investments does. Brava aims to create a billion dollar portfolio from scratch by bankrolling startups on one condition. The businesses must disproportionately benefit women. So, Natalie wants to invest in you guys. Give her the business to invest in. And, launched just two days ago, I'm delighted to tell you that there is now a crowdfunding platform specifically dedicated to female founder businesses. It's called I Fund Women, and it was founded by Karen Khan. And anybody can basically put their business on I Fund Women. And the genius of this concept is that I Fund Women will give you free crowdfunding coaching in how to really make your campaign fly. Um, Karen actually is the founder of Crowd, a video technology platform. And so I Fund Women will shoot your video for you for free. And they are reinvesting 20% of what they make from fees on the platform back into the ventures on it. Now, um, this is the point at which we pause for a short commercial break. Because my own startup, Make Love Not Porn, has historically been forbidden access to crowdfunding. Crowdfunding platforms are no adult content, or else they draw an artificial distinction between sex toys fine, social sex videos not fine. So when Karen announced that she was launching I Fund Women, I reached out to her tentatively and said, would you be open to talking about Make Love Not Porn? And she wrote back and said, oh my God, I've been a member since day one. I love Make Love Not Porn. I would welcome you with open arms. Come on over, let's get you crowdfunded. So guys, this is my appeal to you. Kevin Roberts earned $4.1 million for keeping women out of leadership in Saatchi and Saatchi Worldwide and Publicist Group. Despite his assertions to the contrary, I make absolutely nothing for everything I do to get women into leadership. It doesn't benefit me personally in any way whatsoever. And so this is the one thing that I'm going to ask all of you in this room, everybody watching this video when it's posted online, and our whole industry to do. Please support me in return by crowdfunding my startup. And incidentally, <laughs> incidentally, when you do that, you will also be able to help yourselves. Because women very kindly write to me every day, asking to have coffee with me, asking to have a drink, asking me to mentor them, coach them, give them advice on their business, give them advice on their career. Now, I can absolutely do all of that because I've made a number of the rewards um, in our crowdfunding campaign access to me. Crowdfund my platform, you get to spend an hour with me talking about your business, picking my brains, doing whatever you want. Um, and actually, I've structured the rewards so that groups of you can get together and split the cost between you. Have dinner with me. Have martinis with me. Seriously, I'm dying to guys just help me make my, my own business happen. And, and by the way, I've also structured number of rewards at the corporate level. So agencies and companies that are enlightened enough to want to help crowdfund a big creative idea that is designed ultimately to end rape culture by making it easier to talk openly about sex, therefore to 
promote good sexual values and therefore ultimately to empower women and girls within this society of rape culture and sexual harassment that we battle every single day. That's what my big creative ideas are designed to do. And so if you can crowdfund my campaign at the corporate level, I will come and give a talk to your agency. You can host your board dinner or board retreat in my apartment, which post-renovation will be amazing. And you can even book a year of consultancy and leadership coaching or life coaching with me. Okay, commercial break over. But guys, please go to iFundWomen.com and do that because I would love women and I would love the diversity in our industry to make my own startup happen. How many of you in the audience would love to work with a female founded business that is the future advertising? Show of hands. Guys, your clients are here. Your clients are everywhere. Your clients are all around you. As I said earlier, whatever you think our industry needs, have no fear. That need is there. And when you show people that you have this unique insight into it, and you've created a business that answers and fulfills that need, there will be loads of clients dying to pay money to work with you. Your clients are all around you. And the last of my 10-point action plan to start your own agency the moment you walk out of this building, um, my last action point is make it real. And what I mean by that is leave here tonight, spend the weekend doing everything that I've talked to you about, and decide what you're going to call your agency. Come up with a name. Then register that name as a URL, as a Twitter handle, as a social media presence, as a blog on WordPress, as a, an initial starter site on Squarespace or Wix, and then start talking about it. Start making it real. Again, um, this is something that men are very good at, bullshitting. I want you to bullshit the hell out of the business you're gonna walk out of here and start. And by the way, I feel totally fine telling you to bullshit because women, you're gonna have to go a very long way to bullshit at the level that men do. So even when you think, oh my God, I'm bullshitting, trust me, you're not. All you're doing is you're doing yourself justice. So literally, whatever idea it is, whatever business you want to start, just start making it real now. Because when you put it out there, when you do those things, when you start talking about it, writing about it, it becomes real. And it acts as a magnet. It draws to you the people, the things, the clients, the organizations who will want to be a part of what you're starting and will want to work with you. I'm very fond of saying this, so I'm going to say it yet again. There is a huge amount of money to be made out of taking women seriously. And I mean that in every possible context. I was talking to Katie, um, the creator of The Drum today. Um, she was interviewing me. Woo! Yeah, wherever she is. Yay, The Drum! Wonderful media partner for the Leaf Set Conference. And, um, and Katie said to me, um, you know, when you speak to a lot of people about diversity, you know, what do you think the industry has to do in order to make diversity happen? And, and you know, full credit, Katie, because she was very nervous asking me this because she knows I tend to explode when I get asked this question for the 15 minute time. And, um, and I said to her, well, the industry needs to do what it hasn't done. It needs to turn up and attend this conference. Because here we are, but where are the white men at the top of agencies and the top of holding companies in our industry? They're not here. Where is John Wren? Morris Levy, whom I personally invited to come and speak, Martin Sorrell, Vincent Valore, where are the global CEOs of all the huge global agencies in our business? They're not here. They're not taking women seriously. They're not taking diversity seriously. And the enormously ironic thing is, there is a huge amount of money to be made, especially in an industry whose primary consumer is female. So, I know all of you take women seriously, men and women alike. 
I want you to know that you can absolutely walk out of here tonight. You can start being the future of our industry and you can make all that money our industry is spectacularly failing to make. By completely redesigning the way you do business, by redesigning your business model, by reaching out and hiring all of these amazing people. I mean, honestly, hiring diverse talent at the 3% conference is like shooting fish in a barrel. Why is Digitax the only agency who left those wonderful notices in the women's restroom? Fantastic! Why, why, why hasn't every agency done that? That is bloody brilliant because Digitax has its pick of phenomenal diverse talent. So, all of you can learn from those mistakes. Literally, you can design the businesses that are no longer making those mistakes that will all together go to make up a completely different industry. And the wonderful thing again is that when you do that, I talk a lot about the fact that all around us in our industry we see the business syndrome that I call collaborative competition. Collaborative competition is when everybody in a sector copies their else in the sector by doing exactly the same thing everyone else in the sector is doing. Very bad idea. The future instead is what I call competitive collaboration. Competitive collaboration is when all of us get together and collaborate in a way that you don't see often enough in order to make things better for all of us on the premise of a rising tide floats all boats. That is what then allows each of us off the top of that wave to then be uniquely competitive, leveraging our own individual businesses, skills and talents. In this room today is the advertising ecosystem of the future competitively collaborative. I want you to take everything you've heard about over the past couple of days, every new contact you've made, every friend you've made, every resource I've cited in my presentation, every resource anyone has talked about, and I want you to go out there and be the future advertising. And I want you to start doing it the moment you leave this hall, because seriously, guys, I cannot deliver one more keynote at the 3% conference <laughs> that has me as continually frustrated as everyone in the last five has. I want to be up on the stage at the 6% conference telling a very different story, pointing to a very different industry, looking at very different business results, and looking at a completely transformed industry infrastructure and ecosystem. Every single one of you in this room today can make that happen. So please, do it for all of us and do it for yourself and do it for the future of our industry. Thank you very much.